Tazanji Soro, Tamakona, Tamakona, Tazanji Kuna, Tamakona, Tamakona, Hallelujah. There's someone you don't hear well with your right ear. The power of God is touching you right now. Right now as I'm speaking. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is touching you. Your right ear. I don't know if it's that you don't hear completely or you hear partially, but in the name of Jesus the Christ of God, I decree and declare that ear opens now. That ear opens now. That ear opens now. For all of you who are here by the Spirit, I declare, be released into that ministry. Be released into that dimension of grace. Let there be supply from heaven. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God, songs from the throne. In the name of Jesus, you will bet songs that nations will sing. Do not despise his ability at work in you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, I decree and declare new dimensions in the name of Jesus. And by extension, everyone here who is a worship minister, in the name of Jesus, I declare supernatural songs, songs with power, songs with fire, songs of the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah! Oh death, where is your sting? I'm seeing something in the realm of the spirit. Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a family that this week, if not for this prayer now, I'm seeing that there is a spirit of death. But in the name of Jesus, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come on two of those people. Blotting out every handwriting, my Bible says, and every ordinance that speaks against us. I command the spirit of death in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Be banished from the life of God's people. Be banished from every family. In the name of Jesus. Any family represented here inside all the overflows outside and online. Every pattern of death that will not let you rest. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. In the name of Jesus the Christ of the living God. I declare that the plague of death comes to an end now. The plague of death comes to an end now. The plague of death comes to an end now. You shall not die but live. I prophesy life, life to you, life to your children in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. You can take them back to their seats. Hallelujah. Whilst you're seated, just begin to pray in the spirit. This is what we do. We are people of the spirit. We are spiritual people. Please pray. Ba 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to get to the word, but there are people here you have gone through untold seasons of stagnation. Marking time, sit down. Marking time in one place. And it looks like the only thing moving is your age. Nothing else is moving in your life. Listen to me. There is a grace for speed that the Lord is saying I should release upon people. Hold on, please. Hold on, please. As I pray this grace upon you, we'll do this just in five minutes and I'll sit down. Please, whether you are an usher or not, I want you to help them because of the way the Holy Spirit operates under this prophetic word. Because they will begin to run, literally. And I want you to help them so they don't injure themselves. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God, here at Koinonia, I declare upon everyone under the sound of my voice, by the Spirit of grace, let speed come upon your life. Take that grace now. Please bring them up. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that, help them please. Take that grace. Bring them up please. Take that grace. In business, take that grace. Take that grace. In ministry, take that grace. Then yes, in one, I prophesy to you by the spirit of grace. Receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for speed. Supernatural accomplishment by the spirit of the living God. Receive the grace for speed. Outside, overflows, online. The grace for speed. No more delay. No more retrogression. It will not happen at a natural frequency. I speak to you by prophecy to a spiritual dimension of achievement. Please make sure you are receiving it. Listen, let me tell you this. It is only marvelous in our eyes when it is the Lord's doing. I'm saying it again. I don't care how long you have been in that position. By the spirit of grace, may speed come upon you. In the name of Jesus. For you and for your family. I break the stronghold of delay. I break the stronghold of retrogression. By the spirit of God. That woman on black, I'm seeing oil being poured on her. New levels of speed in the spirit. This is the house of God. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. For all of you who are in front here and for as many who are connecting, grace to run. I speak to you. Speed in your life. Grace to run. Supernatural by the Spirit of God. Supernatural by the Spirit of grace. Your life will be a wonder. Says to you and to everyone who cares to see. I prophesy again in the name of Jesus. Your life will be a wonder. First to you and to as many who can see. Listen to me. Please listen to me. Our possibilities in this kingdom are predicated upon the kind, the level and the dimension of grace that is upon our lives. It is true. 
I'm not wasting your time. This is by the Spirit of God. Because there are certain testimonies that are long overdue. And in the name of Jesus, I push you into them. I push you by prophecy. I push you into them. I clear every barrier that vows that you will not know. This is koinonia. Step into that prophecy. Step into that dimension. Step into that prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. For every one of you who is out here, I pray for you. The evidence of this that has come upon you, may it appear unto all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will return with strange and shocking testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ, please return back to your seat. Let me perform one more function. You don't have to come out. But the Lord is leading me. If you are here and you are walking and you are overdue for promotion, just stand up where you are. The Lord is speaking to me. Listen to me. There is a God in heaven. Oh, don't get too used to the pride of men. There is a God in heaven who regulates times and seasons. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the word of the Lord sent to me for you, I declare by the Spirit of God from this week coming, not next week, by the Spirit of grace, I decree and declare step into the level that is due you through favor, through grace, as far as your career is concerned. In the name of Jesus Christ. It didn't take long for Joseph to rise. Joseph said, let there be searched for, if you can find, a man who is discreet and wise. And the king said, there's no man. And instantly, he was promoted to be a prime minister. One of the things I hope we learn is the power of the supernatural. The supernatural is not about falling down and rolling up and down. Programming spiritual possibilities by the ministry of the word, the ministry of the spirit. You will always not look like it, but there is a grace that keeps shifting you into it. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I welcome every one of you who is worshiping with us for the first time. We have a few minutes to look into the word of God. The Lord bless us in Jesus name. I want to teach tonight by the leading of the spirit on a very brief but powerful, powerful topic. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pay attention just like um, Pastor Pete said. This is a ministry of signs and wonders and whilst the word of God is coming, it's more than an information, it's more than a lecture, it's more than the exegesis of scripture, it's more than the communication of doctrine. As the word of God comes, it comes with it the grace to make you walk in the reality of that which is being taught. And so it's not unusual to have impartations whilst this is happening. Hallelujah. And so please be your brother's keeper whilst this happens so that people do not injure themselves. Second Corinthians chapter 10, we'll read from verse 4 and 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, we'll read from verse 4 and 5. Please give it to us. Second Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 4 and 5. The Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, man-made. It says, But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds verse 5 it says casting down imaginations is the greek word yetzah and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god then it says bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ paul whilst mentoring the church did not leave them in the dark as to how people rise 
and as to how people become victims of situations and circumstances for a very long time the body of christ has placed emphasis on the spirit and the spiritual growth of men and women which is very profitable but we have ignored the realm of the mind we have ignored it to our detriment and to our own peril the bible is very clear about the fact that the mind of man has a role to play in his or her actualizing their destiny their divine destiny in christ and the lord just put it strongly in my heart to share with us on the subject of strongholds and mindsets this is very powerful it's going to be a brief teaching and then we'll pray strongholds and mindsets proverbs chapter 4 again and verse 23 proverbs 4 and verse 23 the bible says to keep your heart with all diligence and there is a reason for that instruction it was not a suggestion it was an instruction keep your heart the word heart um, is used interchangeably in scripture with mind keep your heart with all diligence it says for out of it are the issues of life this is a very deep statement so the issues of life doesn't come into you it comes out of you it says out of it are the issues of life write this down please a stronghold may this be someone's deliverance tonight a stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking that is based on lies and is based on deception let me define what i call a lie a lie is not an incorrect statement in the kingdom a lie is anything god did not say a lie is not just an incorrect statement based on whatever reference a lie is anything god did not say no matter how true it is no matter how sociologically accepted it is if it did not come from the mouth of god in the kingdom we call it a lie is someone getting blessed so a stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking based on lies now you understand and based on deception but it doesn't stop there that faulty thinking has now been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the victims remain at that state so when demon spirits build a fortification around a thinking this is the kind of condition that makes the word of god of non effect please pay attention what then is a mindset let me define it very quickly mindsets refer to ideologies mindsets refer to value systems mindsets refer to perspectives so when we talk about a mindset we're talking of an ideology a value system a perspective a viewpoint a plane of perception mindsets are gates and doorways in the spirit this is a very powerful information that your mindset is literally a gate and a doorway in the realm of the spirit giving access to the ministry of the holy spirit and giving access if you allow to demon spirits you have to pay attention mindsets are gates mindsets are doorways in the spirit they permit the operation of the holy spirit or the operation of demons in the life of an individual so when mindsets are fortified by the presence of demon spirits they become strongholds a faulty pattern of thinking that has now been fortified by the presence of demon spirits and as a result the victim is compelled to keep thinking a certain way and the law is that the signs follow them that believe that means what is following is a report card of what you believe you do not drive them away you change what you believe 
are we together now what is following is a report card is telling us the sum total of your ideologies your belief systems these signs shall follow them that believe these signs of failure shall follow them that believe in failure these signs of retrogression shall follow them that believe in retrogression these signs of limitation shall follow them that believe in limitation the signs tell us what you believe are we together i said mindsets are gates and they are doorways in the spirit they permit the operation of the holy spirit and they permit the operation of demons now write this down please the quality of a man's life is directly tied to his mindset the quality of a man's life is directly tied to scripture tied to his mindset the quality of a man's life believe me when i tell you this that the quality of your life is not just predicated on the love of god the same love is rich unto all are we together now yes the quality of your mindset is the quality of your life here's how the bible puts it proverbs chapter 23 please proverbs 23 and verse 7 proverbs 23 and verse 7 it says for as he thinketh in his heart interchange for mind it didn't say so he will be you already are what your mind says you are for as he thinketh in his heart so is he if your mind is defeated you are defeated if your mind is victorious you are victorious if your mind builds it then it is truly built if your mind destroys it so paul says even what we call warfare is largely in the realm of the mind the contention satan the god of this world has an assignment to blind your mind not just your eyes you do not see with your eyes you see through your eyes you see with your mind it is true define our limits and our possibilities in life mindsets define our limits they also define our possibilities in life this is true your mindset can peg you at a level regardless god's prophetic word over your life your mindset can define your limits your mindset can define your possibilities in life the third point very quickly and then i'll begin to share a few things now this one is a very serious point i want you to pay attention to a man's mindset can limit God in his life very dangerous but powerful scripture as mighty and powerful as God is a man's mindset can limit God Psalm 78 please Psalm 78 we we'll read from verse 41 Psalm 78 and verse 41 the Bible says yea they turned back and tempted God it says and limited the Holy One of Israel the first day I read this scripture I almost threw my Bible to say who wrote this how could a man limit the God of the heavens the psalmist who said where can I hide from your presence can God be limited every time I read the scripture that said is there anything too hard the word too hard didn't look godlike why would god add too hard and i found out that the two there comes because of the difficulty in getting man to believe him and work with him there was nothing too hard when man was not there check genesis 1 god said he saw he said he saw the moment he came into partnership with man the labor of the holy spirit convincing man to rise to the realm of god may make god look as though he's limited they limited the holy one a man's mindset can limit god let me tell you this 
just because you have dreams and visions just because you see in scripture that there are possibilities predestined for you in Christ are we together just because you even have prophetic words over your life is no guarantee that you will step into it by default every dimension of spiritual possibility is dependent on your mindset as father Abraham many times God told Abraham listen carefully God told Abraham that my intention is to make you a father of all nations and we know that God does not lie the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie he became a man but he's not a man if God is a man he must worship who created him God is not a man he only became a man so that men might become the sons of God but God is not a man that you should lie the Bible says not the son of man that you should repent are we together now yes it took Abraham a long time because you see there's something about pain and there's something about limitation when you try and try and try and it does not work chances are that you will build a justifiable theology around your pain to explain away the possibility of God triumphing over that situation and that was the case with father Abraham and God kept beckoning on him Abraham I want to lift you I want to bless you I want you to become the father of nations and then one time God invented a strategy he said Abraham come out when he came out he said look at the stars try counting them and then he would try one two three four have lost count he says so shall thy seed be and your bible says finally abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness are we blessed but very quickly how mindsets are formed now you want to pay attention please pay attention it's important that we understand and examine and probe carefully how our belief systems are formed why because we come from different cultures i come from the middle belt for instance there are many of us who come from the west the east the south some outside of this country many following around the world and historically speaking we've gone through a lot of evolution culturally speaking and so many people have imbibed all kinds of mindsets and all kinds of thinking this is the reason why the kingdom itself has its culture are we together now I did tell us I think it was the, our first service here that you know you are transformed when it's difficult to trace you to an ethnic territory I shouldn't look at you and just say you are a northerner no so the, the extent of your transformation you should be so godlike it should be difficult to associate you with a physical territory that is proof that you are truly transformed so work with me is God helping us number one the first way mindsets are formed is culture 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 never downplay the effect of culture on your mind and on your thinking now there are many healthy aspects of culture many many healthy aspects of culture however however there are destructive aspects of culture Many of us here, I believe that we have cultural ties that if we have our way, we will run away from almost every, this is Africa and there is almost no tribe that does not have something about their culture that is anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-Kingdom. Are we together now? Remember we are believers. Culture is wonderful. There are healthy aspects of culture that inculcate morals like respect for elders, etc. But there are many demonic and destructive dimensions of culture. And you see, when you come into the faith life, you have a choice. Either to subscribe to the ways of the kingdom or to incorporate dangerous and destructive aspects of culture that impede the operation of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Are you blessed? Culture. It is amazing the variety of evil that many cultures, many cultures promote all kinds of things. And sincerely, 
the promoters of these things don't have to be evil people. They are people who are being faithful stewards of something that was committed to them also. Hallelujah. Number two, the second way mindsets are formed, past experiences, good or bad. Your past experience can have a very negative effect on your life. Ask Nathaniel when Jesus sent for him and Nathaniel heard about Jesus, that Nazarene who was doing great things. Here's what Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He was not speaking out of ignorance. There was a track record that Nazarenes did not amount to much. But this one was different. Hallelujah. Just like you are different. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. So he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And then when he came and met Jesus, Jesus surprised him. He says, while you were under the tree, I saw you and said, wow, who is this? He said, just because I told you this, you're now amazed. You will see greater things than this. You will see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Our past can be dangerous. Some of us come from families where nothing was ever gotten with ease. So the moment we teach that there is a possibility for ease in the kingdom, that reality has not been captured in your mind. You can receive every other prophetic word but that because your experience fights that prophetic word. Are we together? Africa, for instance, this is our beloved continent, this is our beloved nation. But did you know that there is a spirit in this nation and in Africa that fights early achievement? The moment you do anything early, people say something is wrong. It's true. When you read about the patriarchs, our fathers of faith in modern history, some of them began to shake the world as teenagers. Joash in the Bible was king at age 8. Josiah was king at age 9. It was as a teenager that David brought Goliath down. There is a spirit that celebrates lateness. There is a spirit that celebrates a, a snail-like advancement in our territory. And we have received it as a heritage. At 33 years, Jesus had turned the world upside down. Is God speaking to us now? Our past experiences. Some of us, respectfully speaking, came from maybe polygamous families. Some of us came from backgrounds where we were not so financially advantaged. Some of us came from backgrounds with all sorts of variations. And you will be surprised the degree to which your past has become a stronghold in your mind. They came out of Egypt in one day, but it took 40 years for Egypt to come out of them. They kept carrying Egypt as they moved. And every time God wanted to do great things, Egypt was saying, no, go back. Just because you are physically out of your territory does not mean you are free. Are we blessed? The past. The past. So when you hear things like favor upon your life, you just laugh and say, look, um, I'm interested in progress, not favor. Let it just be that I'm moving, no matter how slow. And God is saying, no, the unit of destiny is time. I can do something to time to give you an advantage. Hallelujah. Number three. How mindsets are formed. Family backgrounds. I won't talk much about that. Don't be offended, but this is true. That sometimes because of the kinds of families that we came from, nuclear families and, and our extended families, whether it's polygamous, you know, traditional, whatever kind of family, you will be amazed for 10 years, for 20 years, for 30 years, you've been hearing people say, talk in certain ways. You will be amazed at the degree to which you have been influenced. And now it has become a stronghold. 
being a pastor does not set you free automatically no being educated does not bring you that level of spiritual liberty you can be very educated you can rise to the zenith of your profession academically speaking and yet you are still in the bondage of family backgrounds there are people in church for instance who fight everybody because they came from a background where fighting and warfare was the order of the day everything is for me my seat is for me i used to have for instance maybe a stepbrother a stepsister and so we take that same mindset in the office we are suspecting everyone we are angry at everyone we are praying in tongues we are genuinely born again but we are not free are we blessed family backgrounds let me hurry up number four the fourth shaper of our mindset are our levels of exposure this is very powerful exposure is a miracle and exposure is a blessing even though it can be destructive what is exposure the ability to expand and broaden your horizon to know the possibilities that are out there beyond your scope of reference is called exposure many times we interpret life from the lens of mediocrity the lens of our limitations listen carefully and when god wants to help you he will expose you to new dimensions there are many of us for instance who have not been exposed to certain possibilities that is in christ for instance we have not been exposed to the reality of the healing power of jesus the restoring power that is in jesus the love of god like the bible says the fellowship of the holy spirit in acts chapter 18 don't turn there the bible talks to us about a man called apollos are we together the bible says he was a great man fervent in spirit he was eloquent but he knew only the baptism of john if you read only apollo's book for the rest of your life you would never know that the holy spirit is a person who you can relate to you can relate with i am always i am ever conscious of the fact that there is more than i can than i'm now seeing it is it is important small businesses small ministries small families small destinies small goals i'm not talking of some carnal ambitious things that don't have a divine bearing no not at all exposure is a miracle when god wants to step you to the place of destiny he does not travel with your body he travels with your mind your body only goes where your mind has gone when your mind returns back it is your mind is an authorized usher that takes your body to the place of destiny the father saw the possibility of the whole world coming back to him again and he sent his son it was a goal that was doable he saw the victory that he could give to the saints not only the victory that he had as god and so he came and finished that project in three years the ability to dream with god is a miracle the ability to conquer the limitations of culture the limitations of our sociological context it takes exposure and for many of us you see how you are exposed matters because you can be exposed in a way that destroys you there are many people their doom and their unbecoming be began at the instance of a supposed exposure exposed to vices exposed to ways there are many people who were obedient and loving and sincere except that they met a group of people who wrongly exposed them and they became harsh disrespectful dishonoring aggression is not exposure it's immaturity you see but exposure is powerful moses until then had not met the god of the bible he had been in egypt he was being mentored to be the next pharaoh but now he ran away and the bible says while he was tending his father-in-law sheep jethro suddenly god was ready to expose him to a new horizon he was about to meet the god of the bible and he saw a bush that was burning and yet not consumed ah! 
Moses said, I didn't see this in my natural room. With all of the wizardry in Egypt, I didn't see it in this fashion. And a voice came out of it. Moses, take off your shoes, your experience, your perspective, your mindset. Take it off for where you stand is holy ground. It was on the strength of that exposure. Moses returned back to Ramesses, his half-brother, and said, Brother, good to see you. This time around, I didn't come. I'm not coming as the weak one who ran away. I've met someone. There, 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 there's an exposure. I've been exposed to his glory his power and his possibilities and that one who opened my eyes instructed me to you let my people go and Pharaoh said wow what an interesting lecture I see you've learned a lot Janus Jambers come and show this man that this is Egypt and they threw their rod and Moses threw his rod to cut the long story short a time came when the firstborns died and Pharaoh came to a point where he realized that there was more. Nebuchadnezzar was one of such people. He was not exposed to certain dimensions beyond his scope of reference. He thought he was all and in all and God humbled him. Exposure is powerful. Exposed to the light of God. Exposed to the miracle working power. Did you know why many of the saints, when you read several books like God's generals, you know why it was easy for them to step into certain dimensions? Because they were in the atmospheres where they saw it happening. Why will you doubt the miracle working power of God when right in your presence you watch someone stand up in a wheelchair? Right in your presence you watch the dead rise. So what Satan does to erode spiritual possibilities in a territory is to use subtlety to begin to hide these exposures so that after a long time there are hardly people who have seen those dimensions in God. Exposure, your level of exposure financially spiritually your level of exposure it matters you must contend for a healthy level of exposure listen to me nigeria listen to me africa we have called ourselves many things that god did not call us why because of color of skin because of our sociological limitations because of our history etc but the Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. You must subscribe to a superior orientation that begins to culture you to believe something you were not born with. That's the reason why very few people rise to a global scale because we have been indoctrinated by culture subliminally indoctrinated by respectfully speaking mass media and all kinds of experiences we've been subjugated to believe that just because you are a nigerian just because you are an african just because you are from one area of the nation or so on and so forth it means you are limited he that cometh from above is above all above all systems above all structures he that cometh from above is above all let me give you the last key how mindsets are formed is god blessing you tonight the fifth way mindsets are formed is association now this is a very serious one association The Bible says God called Abraham. He didn't call Lot. Very interesting scripture. And Lot went with him. God did not call Lot. He called Abraham. But Lot said, I didn't hear God. But at least I heard your obedience. And I'm going to follow you. And by reason of that association, God began to multiply Lot. When Lot forgot that it was because of association, he detached from Abraham. The next time we hear about Lot is in the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah, about to die. Associations are powerful. Get my teaching blessed by association. It's a very powerful teaching. Many people were visionary people on their way to do big things until they became part of groups associations clubs and all kinds of facts that derailed and faded their morals plunged them into mediocrity and laziness etc associations are powerful are we together now yes the bible says do not be deceived he said bad company 
can corrupt good morals it is often said that you are the average of your friends if there are six people in that group and there are five foolish people there's about to be a sixth one he that works with the wise he doesn't have to be wise just work with the wise the bible says he that works with the wise shall also be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed there are people who used to have and keep loving families except that they became part of friends and associations i said you mean you don't beat your wife this is africa let me tell you what i did to my wife last week i beat the living daylight out of her and there's there's thorough compliance in that family now and then the man returns back you see notice when god came to adam in the cool of the day the bible says and they heard the voice of the lord walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where are thou and adam said i heard your voice and i hid because i was naked the next question who told you Let me break it down Oh, <laughs> 
have received an orientation that did not came from did not come from me who did you listen to adam now did not call her the wife he said the woman you gave me and he now turned and said woman what is this that you have done she said the serpent satan became the god of this world because he didn't blame anybody every time you transfer responsibility you also transfer dominion that's why when jesus was becoming seen he didn't speak he was silent also are we blessed yes association is powerful let me tell you this love is a command association is not you must be intentional about your friends there's no such thing as we grew up together edit your relationships with intention and sustain the courage and the boldness to preserve and only keep people in your life who are consistent with your spiritual values and where god is taking you to listen to what i'm telling you this is the plague of africa the the emotional blackmail of saying we were together we grew up together we're from the same village from the same this no if they do not sustain the values that make your kingdom come the values that make for an impactful life the values that make for intimacy with the holy spirit you don't have to hate them but off you go listen listen don't just clap don't just shout listen to what i'm saying Was it not because a man entered other people's boats that they began to sink? Jonah knew what he had done. He knew what he was carrying and he quietly entered into the boat of visionary businessmen who had gone, they had labored, they got their goods, they got everything. I'm sure their wives were happy waiting for them to come. And then everything began to be boisterous and he kept quiet. He was sleeping. They threw their things out. He watched them through it. Look at the kind of retrogression his presence caused. Let me tell you this. Human beings have prophetic implications. It's true. Salis Kabrandagatusia. Jesus fasted and prayed all night to choose 12 disciples. Please help them. Jesus. Medical people tell us, come doctor, this is a doctor, this is a medical doctor. Medical people tell us that there are certain diseases that are communicable. This is medicine. Is that true? I may not love him, I may not believe in him, but just, and it can come on you. That is what I bring. Example. John, I want to lose everything. John, the upon your courage to edit your association. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. There are people who love the house of God and love the things of God. But many times you will find out that they become part of some sort of group, maybe for some financial benefit, political benefit, etc. And they come and lie to you that it's a nuisance to love God. It's a nuisance to be passionate about the things of God. That's not how politicians rise, they say. That's not how business people rise, they say. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let it lie for everything I need. association can affect your mindset when you are in the midst of people who pray i assure you it won't be long before you take god seriously in fact let me tell you this a community life is the key to sustaining kingdom values 
you will never be able to grow consistently in isolation you will need to connect to a body of believers of like-minded passion so when you are praying in the spirit someone does not look at you and laugh and make you feel stupid for praying in tongues then you quickly off your ringtone your ringtone is prophesying to you and you off it quickly because you are in an environment where there are unwritten rules that it is you are too civilized and too dignified association i learned this early in life and for many of us this may be a message already for you there's such a psychological pressure to belong yes i know that psychologically speaking one of the needs of men is to be accepted and to be loved this is why the bible says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god he said i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness he is that friend that can stick closer than a brother You must trust God for grace. Listen to me carefully. There are many of you, you would have been champions now by the standard of God, but you've surrounded yourself with all kinds of mediocres, comparing themselves with themselves and not doing anything global. Small minds doing small things, whereas your contemporaries are changing nations. We must trust God for grace edit your association edit your association hallelujah I, I heard of a story of a man who was deaf and it was not known that he was deaf and so while he was trying to climb i think he was climbing a very high altitude or a tree or something while he was climbing those under kept beckoning on him listen please please come down you will die and he thought they were cheering him and he was smiling at them and kept moving up and they were saying come down some were even crying because they didn't know he was deaf so he thought that they were cheering him and when he climbed and arrived there that was when they discovered that the man was deaf because he could not hear them he had to make do with his interpretation of what they were doing so he called what they are they are mockery he called it commendation and it sponsored him until he finished strong the lord is calling me to ministry from where which village have you had did you see what your father become and you shrink back in mediocrity oh from this little hamlet the lord will take you and the sounds of worship from you will get to the ends of the earth and here they come unaccredited counselors they come with all kinds of counsels of ahitophel you must trust god for grace to connect yourself with the right people it has to be intentional please listen to me some of you are in politics some of you are in government some of you are in business and i tell you this you are the average both in thought and in results of the people you surround yourself with are we blessed quickly let me touch on the last area and then we pray when the lord showed me the work that he's now doing when the lord showed me the possibilities that would be working in as a ministry it was it was something that was big based on my background that would take the truth of God's power and grace literally across the nations of the earth I studied my Bible and I looked through history and I saw great men and women and right from that small room I said Lord I believe you let's go let me tell you it's, it's, it's not unusual for people to not believe you so don't don't think it's new of course they will not believe you until they see the workings of the grace of God on your life I don't know why I'm saying this but I'm saying this to someone right now because you are still evolving it does not yet appear you 
you told people that you're going to fund the gospel you will fund the gospel like a government but now people are laughing at you because you're in one room find courage history always repeats itself that god can lift you as a trophy mary said be it unto me according to your word be it unto me how do we pull down strongholds listen very carefully number one the first key to deconstructing and dismantling wrong inferior beliefs that keep us in poverty that keep us in failure that keep us in mediocrity the first key write this down please is to recognize and to admit the need for renewal you must recognize and you must admit listen to me knowing that you need help is almost half the problem solved the fact that you are aware the prodigal son came to himself the bible says and here's what he said how many hired servants does my father have and i'm here feeding with the swine he came to himself he was not advised the bible says he said to himself i will arise and i will go to my father and i'll say father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not worthy to be taken as your son but take me as one of your servants and while he was coming afar off the father saw him and came and embraced him the responsibility of recognition that i recognize and i realize that i may not have any advantage from a territorial standpoint i recognize and i realize that i may be coming from a background that is largely anti-christ anti-kingdom for instance that recognition that brokenness that contriteness of heart will always attract the spirit of grace and wisdom to you are we together it's true You need to admit that you need renewal that's why the bible says that we should receive with meekness the engrafted word can i tell you this i submit to you people of god there is a lot of pride and a lot of arrogance in the body of christ and across our sociological sphere is the reason why very few people rise pride over mediocrity pride over nothing I'm not being I'm not being sarcastic I apologize if it sounds so but I need to charge you and shake you up listen do not be ashamed and embarrassed when you discover that there is need for a higher dimension that meekness and humility is very powerful there were two thieves with Jesus are we together now one of them kept ranting and talking nonsense even though he was about to die you see those kinds of people at the point of death he was a thief he was aware that he was a thief he was aware of what he stole and he didn't sound contrite at all mocking jesus and the other one said mr man shut up we stole we are aware of what we did this man is innocent and jesus heard him there is there is something about the voice of brokenness there is something about the voice of genuine meekness no matter how wrong you are no matter how confused you are the moment you are broken and you are contrite you are attracting the attention of his majesty he said this day you will be with me in paradise you need to admit the need i had a conversation not too long ago with one of our fathers in this nation and um when we spoke we spoke for a few hours and when he began to open me up to dimensions in ministry saying so many things sharing from years of experience i sat there feeling like a toddler i sat there feeling like someone who was just getting out of kindergarten and i said bless god for this encounter this is the kind of exposure that i need be careful be sure that you are not your best reference it is dangerous you must find a way 
of finding yourself in an atmosphere that stretches you pats your back very briefly and yet tells you that there are higher heights though we are few we're surrounded by men who have crossed that river before and this, this is the song we'll be singing forever Listen, this is very powerful. Stretch yourself. You've done so much wonderful. But then God immerses you in an environment that stretches you. I remember the first day I watched Benny Hinn, I said, my God, what is this? I remember when I watched some of the generals. Even though God was already doing great things in and through my life, I said, what is this? I had the opportunity to meet a few of them before they went to be with the Lord. Some of them, you know, those who met them, not God's generals now. But it was, it was amazing what they did to my spirit. I continue to press this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. They don't have to be wrong things. Beware of excessively patting yourself at the back. Do so and then quickly champions are always forward thinking nobody claps for you for the same thing twice when they clap for you once that's it if you have nothing new there will be no applause again are we blessed so you must recognize and admit the need for renewal number two there are times that you may need to cast the demons and the spirits that keep the faulty mindset. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. You must cast their, their, their real spirits that can build. The Bible says, in whom the God of this world, please look up, hath blinded their minds. It was not a philosophy that blinded their minds. There is a real spirit that blinds the minds of people. Let me tell you this. Did you know that just because you are looking, it doesn't mean you are seeing? Yeah. The Bible says that when those men who wanted to sodomize um, Lot, remember now, Lot gave his daughters and they said, no, 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 we want Lot. The Bible says that the angels caused blindness to come on them and they wearied themselves in front of the door. They were right in front of the door, but they could not see. The miracle of open eyes. The Bible says the God of this world, you can pass opportunities, you can pass relationships, but because there are spirits that blind the eyes of people, they will make you call good evil. You will call evil good. They will make you destroy the helpers of your destiny because you cannot see. He said, open down my eyes that I may behold. There are times you need to take authority in the name of Jesus and cast those spirit influences. that comes into your life something happens and until you fight it you are not at rest so your life is surrounded by the memory of good things and good people who keep passing through your life like ushers you must sustain the grace to take authority over the spirits that cause these things Number three, how do you pull down these strongholds? The renewal of the mind. What does that mean? Passionately pursuing to know God's perspective about life. Listen to me. There is an intention to renewal and transformation. You must passionately pursue God's perspective. We study the Bible because it contains the wisest perspective about life, about everything. You have to know God's perspective about life, about finances, about everything in life. 
called the renewal of the mind romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 it says do not be conformed he says i beseech thee brethren by the mercies of god that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice he says holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of service or worship verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world is the word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with the system he says but be ye transformed evolve into superior dimensions of yourself by the renewing of your mind you must trust god and refuse your current level lord i am tired of this level i'm tired of the limitations the mediocrity that the mediocrity that comes with this level the problem was never the oil it was the space that the vessels gave the oil the prophet diagnosed it accurately he said you call the oil small because it was a small vessel carrying the oil the oil was hearing the conversation he says go and borrow vessel you don't borrow oil but you can borrow vessel buy the truth sell it not he says go and borrow borrow not a few when he began to pour the oil to the vessels the oil kept increasing he said go and sell it pay your debt and leave off the rest are we together now when you read job chapter 29 job was giving us the secret of his outstanding life and he began to give us a a, a breakdown of the many things that happened to him the first light that came upon job was on his mind not on his path there are two dimensions of light there is the one that shines upon your head there is the one that shines on your path the one that shines upon your head recalibrates reconstructs your understanding is called the mind of christ philippians chapter 2 and verse 10 it says permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a belief system that the son of the living god had that made the holy spirit comfortable living with him from age 12 while his contemporaries were running around he was with the scribes and the pharisees learning learning it was on the strength of his spiritual investment that he could withstand satan at the wilderness because he came to him it is written he came to him it is written he came to him it is written you must be full not just of scripture from a religious standpoint but it is important to know god's perspective please look up the kingdom has god's idea on everything god has his idea on kingdom wealth and prosperity the world also has his idea the world's way is that you can cheat you can kill if need be you can tell lies you can be greedy you can be involved in anything provided money comes but the kingdom has its way you must learn the ways of god there is jesus the way the methodology of the kingdom the authorized channel he said i am the door a door means an authorized access point please listen carefully and so hitherto when you were alienated from the commonwealth of israel you were not saved you were not born again you could do anything anyhow but now you are in the kingdom and you begin to study the ways of god then you learn that there is he that scattereth and yet increases the ways of god there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty you learn that god can load men with daily benefits not just monthly benefits are we together now yes you learn that the proof of his fatherhood is his benevolence that if you being evil know how to give good gifts so the the awareness of the fatherhood of god gives you the confidence to approach him you must learn the ways of god in the kingdom there is how god restores in the world there's no restoration if it's gone it's gone ah, but hallelujah in the kingdom there is a way and i will restore even time the years god doesn't just restore things god restores time so when jesus died while they were talking about the dead jesus within 72 hours he was back to life 
this is a blessed hope for us that means that all of the things you would have achieved that your knowledge or your insufficient knowledge did not allow you to achieve that the hand of God is able to go back into your yesterday and take everything there and bring it forward to your tomorrow this is scripture but you must learn the ways of God your confidence in this kingdom is when you sustain a superior belief that is culture not just based on Scientology or the philosophies of men you are transformed to the degree that you have the mind of Christ in experience hmm. are we together it is true that we live in a dark world that is full of evil it is true that there are arrows that fly by day but then you are convinced you are convinced that the jealousy of God has such his investment upon you the Bible says where your treasure is that is where your heart will be and if you are truly his treasure that means his heart and his jealousy has been invested towards you this gives you confidence that when men say there is a casting down for me I can say there is a lifting up it's not just some Christian jargon this is truth based on the mind of God ah, that the wisdom of God is at work in me it is true this is the mind of Christ you have to believe it do not think this is childish you ignore this it will be to your peril Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 the mindset of the kingdom and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day it says the Lord will set you on high this is my destiny in Christ I sustain that mindset from whatever background and regardless any situation that he will set me on high above nations not above contemporaries above nations verse 2 it says and all these blessings shall come upon me and even overtake me this I believe this I believe ah. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 I'm showing you pieces of scripture that reflect the mind of Christ and I will give Joshua Selman favor in the sight of anybody including enemies of Egyptians and the proof is that when you go you will not go empty I believe it the Bible says strangers shall feed your flock this is God's mindset listen you have to choose what to believe this is not just some Pentecostal thing no believe me this is how the kingdom was framed it says true faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God many people keep arguing this and they are failing they are broke they are mediocre they are going down they are sick nothing is happening in their lives superior belief systems cultured by the word of God when I get up in the morning I say this is the day the Lord has made my emphasis is the Lord has made who made the day matters to me because I need to know if my interest was represented in that day and if it is the Lord that made that day I am secured because I know what the Lord can make he is the maker of the heavens and the earth so if he made a day a thousand shall fall by my right he said ten thousand by my right side but he says I need not fear why I will only stand and watch and see the reward of the wicked my Bible tells me that the fullness of my days I will fulfill this is what I believe you can't imagine I was saying it humorously somewhere you can't imagine the number of text messages I get quite honestly Apostle be careful I just had a vision and I saw your name in a shrine and I know they are not lying it will be foolish to think at this level the devil will be clapping to no but did the Bible not say behold I give you authority over snakes and scorpions he said and over all the powers of the enemy and then he said nothing here's the keyword shall by any means there are many means many means but he says shall by any means 
your realities are framed by what you choose to believe are we together now yes sir so you must make up your mind it is not about i am a yoruba person it is not about i am an Igbo person it's not about i am a hausa person i'm a northern i'm an american a european asian no no the bible says we have been called out of every tribe every tongue every kindred immersed in the kingdom baptized into christ through his spirit and you must sustain that superior belief system listen to me there are many of you respectfully speaking and please don't feel insulted you have been in this city for many years and the city does not know you why because if there is a belief system that makes dominion work you have to know what you believe you have to choose what you believe i made a covenant with god and this i believe i found out from scripture that jesus never met anyone twice for the person to be blessed and i made a covenant with god i said lord you are sending me to minister to people may i never have to meet someone twice for his life to change yes sir because you will meet people who are at a point of life and death there's no time for playing games and dilly dally the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 the bible says the spirit of the lord is upon me upon me upon me upon me is a revelation the spirit of the lord is upon me it's not trouble that is upon me god told me what is upon me whatever he did not say there are yokes that can come on people but he told me what is that if i ever feel heavy what is upon me is the spirit of the lord this is my thinking So there's no room for depression to say this is a uh, 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 uh. the bible tells me if you ever feel anything upon you it is the spirit of the lord and then he says help them please he says he has anointed me i truly believe i am anointed find a way of believing this this is not a pastor's thing this is not a minister's thing let me tell you what it means to be anointed it comes from the word to be smeared with oil but that simply means authorized anointing is a system of authorization it legitimizes your operation so that you can minister the power of god these are ordinary hands yes my family members are here my sisters are here biological people but when i met him something happened to me and i believe it i believe that i'm not ordinary look i'm not bragging forgive me i am i'm revealing something to you when you hold that file it's not five fingers that is holding that file uh -uh. please find a way of believing what i'm telling you help them please for as long as you are the only one holding that file a door will never open for as long as you are the only one preaching your, your words cannot carry that power the ability of the spirit your words become like arrows sent into destinies dissecting impossible situations why because you are aware i read in my bible jesus said it and i believe and the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs so i expect it that whilst i am preaching whilst the word of god is coming there is an unction Kali's an unction healing an unction delivering an unction opening doors this i believe this is the supernatural power of a transformed mind your mind can give the holy ghost space when the man of god was leading us in worship here one of the things i was praying for is lord help your people understand what you have done to us help us understand that we are not ordinary this is not a pentecostal thing these hands are not ordinary hands hear me doctors hear me medical people that is not only an injection an injection should not have more power than your hand believe me when i tell you this exalted reign in 
and ruling with him in power we have been commanded to bless and i believe you hear people come and testify here let me tell you this i've told you that prophecy does not only reveal it's not only when i call names of people and numbers no that if it is true you are anointed then the opening of your mouth is like the opening of the gate of men's destiny because you will release something from the throne through your mouth to the destinies of men and let me use the opportunity and declare over someone in the name of jesus the son of the living god i speak over your life and all that concerns you step into new dimensions of the spirit new wine upon your destiny new dimensions of spiritual illumination in the name of jesus christ hear me let me speak over your life that any man who fights you goes down instantly please sit down we're about to pray shortly Enter the new, says the Spirit of God. Enter the new. I'm bringing you into the new. Kalindes kene kapaharande shadia, prakades kili mana katosia. Enter the new. Mantedes kebarita, pegadebele kete baraka tosia ta. Enter the new. Say the Spirit of the Lord. Listen to me. Please hear me. If you are in ministry here in the name of jesus from tonight step into a supernatural dimension of ministry no more preaching and sharing the grace with people sleeping as though you is not god that is talking to you what kind of a ministry is that the next time you go to lead that prayer the next time you go to lead that fellowship i'm speaking by the spirit the next time you go to your prayer group the next time you lead the the, the fellowship at your workplace i release an unction upon you i release an anointing upon you you will speak with fire you will see signs following in the name of jesus Christ. Spirit of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hear me, business people, listen to me. It takes more than buying and selling to prosper. There is truly a grace that can help men. There is a grace that can give men visibility in this kingdom. It's called the Hear Ye Him anointing. The anointing that compels systems and structures to acknowledge the workings of the spirit on your life i don't care how limited your business has been in the name of jesus from tomorrow I stand by the grace of God. I place an unction upon what you do. And in the name of Jesus, let it prosper by the Spirit of the living God. Defying the laws of failure, I release you to prosper. Hallelujah. Listen, we're talking about mindsets and strongholds. Please listen to me it's not enough to just receive jesus into your heart you have to journey with the holy ghost and through scripture to begin the work of transformation 
is one of the hardest if i would use that expression assignment of the holy ghost in the life of a believer because most believers are not malleable enough every time i'm before him i tell him lord i'm, I'm before you i'm aware of my limitations i'm aware of my limitations i ask that there be an exchange a supply of strength and power there are so many sick people depending on my life there are so many confused people turn grace from heaven Solomon Lange called him my helper. Mete Makona. Mete Makona. Listen to what you are saying. Mete Makona. Mete Makona. Wasanji Solo. Mete Makona. Mete Makona. Listen to me. For some of you, you may not know what has come upon your life. It's until you step out of this place tonight. All of a sudden, you will watch doors open. Supernatural doors open. You will open your Bible and a strange dimension of illumination, revelation knowledge coming upon you. Hear me. Everything he said here is true. You can believe it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the works that I do, you shall also do. He says, greater works. I believe him. I sincerely believe I sincerely believe that I can never be disadvantaged honestly honestly I believe it when the Lord sent me to this city the Holy Spirit instructed me to get the map of Abuja and when I dropped the map on my table I said this city is so small it's not pride all of a sudden I saw just six local governments we are well able Joshua and Caleb the remaining came back with all kinds of reports the Bible calls it evil reports you have said many things about yourself God did not tell you you have received many things that were not given by God. It's time to change it tonight. It's time to refuse. It's time, even if you are the first person who does it from your family, there is grace for you. Is someone ready to pray tonight? Lift your voice and begin to pray all across this building. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Go ahead and pray. Koinonia, pray. All the overflows, pray. Outside, pray. Someone pray over your life. Cast him down every imagination. 
Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. The next prayer point. You are going to confront head on every challenge that has stood before you and mock the God of the Bible. I release my faith with you in this corporate atmosphere. Call it by name and command it by the Spirit. Get out of the way. It's time to advance. It's time to make progress. Someone pray. Someone pray. Financial mountains. Someone pray. Mountains of spiritual laxity. Mountains of prayerlessness. Mountains of wordlessness. We're still praying. I want you to make very powerful declarations. Don't be afraid. The Bible says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the listed of the Lord say so. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. And whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. Are you ready to speak over your destiny and over your family? Lift your voice and begin to speak. I prophesied as I was commanded. I decree and declare the Lord is my light and salvation. Are you declaring by the Spirit of God? My path is as a shining light, shining ever brighter. Please don't be quiet. Don't be silent. I decree and declare by the Spirit of God. Prophesy your global disability. Prophesy your influence, but your prosperity, declared by the spirit of grace. I rise by the spirit of God. Greater levels of prayer, greater levels of passion, greater levels of fire, greater levels of love, appetite for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus, going from glory to glory. Grace to grace, grace multiply, wisdom multiply, power multiply. Hallelujah. 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 Two more prayer points and we are done. Let me tell you this. We are about to pray. You are going to call back everything that left you and yet is not in God's divine purpose to leave you. The Bible says, where fell it? Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he threw a stick and the axe head came back. Help them, please. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit is ministering to me. You have to sustain a superior mindset that everything that leads your life is still in the earth. And there is a technology to call it back to your life. Relationships, opportunities. Are you ready to pray? Lift your voice in the name of Jesus. Help them please, help them please. And I will restore to you the years that the tanker war, the palmer war has eaten. Command restoration over your destiny. Command restoration over your life. Command restoration over your prayer life. A greater dimension of prayer fire. A greater dimension of road fire. A greater dimension of spiritual diligence. Nothing missing. Nothing 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. We're about to round up. Listen to me. I'm a student in the school of the spirit. And I have learned and I have come to respect the power of the anointing. It is truly what is on you that controls what is around you. It is true. And for every time you come to this ground, there has to be something that will rest upon your life. It says, my horn has thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed. Shallah I am anointed. I am anointed. I am authorized. Authorized to do business. Authorized to do ministry. Authorized to advance. The power of the Holy Ghost is a reality that we must embrace it says for with god now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask or think according to the power is the word energy that works in us there is an energizing of the spirit hallelujah listen i'm about to speak over your life there are words that are empty there are words that are informative but there are words that are traced they carry deep mysteries on them hallelujah madam what is your name this woman on black huh what's your name come who is shoma what's your what's her name huh who is Chioma? Your Chioma. Madam, please just give me five minutes. Look at me. Where are you coming from? You're here in Abuja. I want to pray for you. Your life is truly about to change. You believe in Jesus. Did you come alone? I came with my sister. Where is she? Because it's two of you. God is visiting the entire family. Where is the person? Lord, you took my pain away. You're my peace, my melody In the center of the song You gave me a brand new song To sing to you And find a new song Hallelujah Ijeoma This is what I'm hearing, who is that? Ijeoma, what's your name? What's your name? Ijeoma Taking the pain and the sorrows away You've given me peace on the entire throne Don't need to cry cause you always 
there is a grace for favor madam that is coming on you shout jesus as loud as you can jesus take that grace now in the name of jesus may that grace take you to realms superior realms in the spirit in the name of jesus hold your hands together truly speaking let me tell you i give you now and the next one month the way god is going to shift all of you i stretch my hands take that grace right now in the name of jesus you step into superior dimensions of favor this is by the power of the holy ghost please don't come out at random our time is gone our time is gone we are yet we are yet to have our first miracle service in abuja and i i i'm not sure we may do it this month but by the grace of god we would have by his grace soon our first miracle service here where we we'll allow the lord to move in ways and stamp down darkness once and for all hallelujah the power of god is going to come on one of you this four ladies looking at me i'm seeing oil being poured upon you new dimensions in the spirit this is what the holy ghost is telling me in the name of jesus i bless every one of you and i pray for you even by the power of the holy spirit you will never return the same in the name of jesus christ you will never return the same in the name of jesus christ let me talk to one more person james who is james i'm hearing the word james who is james you are wearing like a green nose mask or something like that james who is that what's your name what's your name what do you do sir i'm a pastor you're a pastor yes. where in Kubo, in Abuja, yes. here, your own ministry. Yes. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, I stretch my hands. There is there, there is still a need for many, many, many servants of God doing great things. And I tell you, the days of superstar christianity in terms of exclusivity and fighting other people those days are over we are united first in the name of jesus regardless our differences doctrinally etc we are one big army advancing the kingdom can i have a believing amen i pray for you sir may the lord empower you you return back to your assembly a sign and a wonder in the name of jesus the christ amen. of god I decree and declare fresh grace, Amen. fresh power upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. My brother, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. In Jesus' name, that which has never been done, even in your family, may my God use you to do. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sir. Now, I don't... I don't do politics in church i don't i try as much as possible to not do i love lands in a lot of trouble but sir i will talk to you but i'm seeing you climb a ladder in politics there is a strange the, this is this is even just the beginning this is what god is doing that that's something we'll discuss in a personal basis but i'm telling you that do not plateau you are just about to rise there is a great destiny for you even politically in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ please bring me someone who shouts now loud under the anointing the hearing of everyone let me just talk to that person and we're done so here you are from christ embassy who is that i want to pray for you i'm seeing that you're a pastor you're from christ embassy sir look at me i want to pray for you in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god what do you do sir I, i'm a lawyer and also a pastor you're a lawyer and a pastor yes sir don't feel bad i'm looking at you and i'm seeing a man on chains from head to toe this is what i'm saying a lawyer and a pastor but in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i declare i stretch my hands let it come to an end now 
everything that represents captivity i release grace upon you sir Amen. you will go back and you will do exploits in career and in ministry Amen. in the name of jesus christ Amen. is there is there a pastor like that is there someone like that you're a pastor i'm not seeing a pastor but i'll pray for you anyway but you're, you're a pastor okay father in the name of jesus i pray that you will carry superior dimensions of the giftings and the grace of god where is that pastor you are you're a worker here pastor in christ embassy or i don't know if you are or was or something It's you where is your you, you are here alone where is your wife wife come quickly please there is an oil there is a grace that is coming upon you god is not done with you both of you i stretch my hands by the spirit of god and i pray for you both this is what the lord is revealing to me there is a dimension of the healing ministry that god wants to bring you into receive that grace take that anointing both of you will walk in superior dimensions of the healing grace i release that anointing from today step into it it's an impartation by the spirit of grace in the name of jesus christ lord i give you my heart I give you my soul i truly for you Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. In the next three minutes, I'd like you to cry and say, Father, take your place in my life. Restore that ark of your presence. I used to carry that ark until fame in ministry took it away. I was a man of the secret place, but preaching engagement put your place in my life. Pray before your maker. I want more of you. I want more of you. Hey, Jesus, the more I know you, the more I want to know you.
feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign be the greatest everybody on the fake shit i look around and feel like everybody is the fakest i make this every day and i'm impatient hoping one day i blow up from the basement statement the top is so vacant i don't need shit that i think is amazing waiting for my day when i'm playing sold out shows for a thousand faces hey give me that crown get in my way and to be put down it ain't your place all this my town if i want that shit then i'll get it right now i'm losing it the noose if it's some loose shit a stupid myth you choose to live or choose to dip you choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign Yeah! There's no mercy in this world, just hunger, thirsty persons In different versions, each new update, that shit worsens Why? Pull back the curtain and you'll see the different vermin